Hey everybody, Mark Ryan here, INS producer. So to start off this episode, I'm going to share some recent messages I got from the guys. I think this will give you some insight into what it's like producing this show and into what has become my own personal hell. Mark, uh, M-Dub here. Um, and I was actually wondering maybe if you could introduce me as M-Dub on the next episode. Anyway, uh, I'm confused. Uh, I'm confused about a couple things. Uh, honestly, I wasn't paying attention, but uh, camp was going on and on about something or other in the last episode, and Kevin was, I don't even know. Then he was, at, they were asking me about being confused, and I wasn't confused, but I, w- I don't know what they were talking about. Uh, and admittedly, I got a little distracted because some of my comic book, uh, with this whole NFT thing, I was trying to figure out if my comics are uh, NFT. I've got a Doctor Strange number 179, uh, 9.4 mix. I've got uh, Doctor Strange number one when they redid it. Uh, that's a 9.4 mint as well. Then I've got a 9.6 mint 178. Uh, I'm hoping to make some cash. And I was thinking maybe if you just cut out a little bit of those guys meandering and maybe we do like cut out, we put a little thing that's like my talks comics, my talks workout. Uh, I think that fans probably be pretty into that. Uh, peace. I, I got to head back to the gym. You know me. Hey Mark, Kevin here. Why do I keep hearing Brian on the podcast? We agreed that we were going to cut his lines and I was going to redub them with a French accent. If you could, just mute his mic going forward. Don't even record him at all. Also, I'm starting to regret giving Mike those Doctor Strange comics in exchange for his appearances on the show. He seems to think this is a comic book podcast. Could you talk to him about that? Uh, oh, and uh, I know you keep asking to get paid. Look, this is a lucrative show, but we agreed you were going to do this for exposure. Uh, one day, you're going to be a rich producer, hanging out with movie stars, and you're going to have me to thank, buddy. Mark, it's camp. I don't know if you're screening your phone calls. You just don't want to talk to me, but you know what this is about. Little misters, little fucking misters. I've had that in the hopper for three weeks. You know it. Kevin knows it. Mike knows it. Mike knows it. He knows I've been wanting to get little misters out there for three fucking weeks. It's my project. Everyone knows. Then we get to it at the end of the goddamn day, and he's confused. Mike's confused. You know what confuses Mike? Mike's confused when we're not talking about his comic book collection. Mike's confused when we're not talking about his fucked up sociopath kid. Mike's confused when we're not talking about some made up martial art. That's what Mike's confused about. You know, he can spend every week trying to ramp up and try to get more business for his workout programs on YouTube. That's good for him. That's great. If anybody else wants to get a taste, somebody wants to tie into the pageant business, and they get shit on. And what the fuck was that from Kevin? Oh, uh, you're confused, Mike. You've heard Kevin go off on me when I make one goddamn mistake. And Mike gets, oh, uh, you're confused, Mike. That's fucking bullshit, and I'm getting sick of it. I don't know how long this is going to fucking last if this shit keeps going on. You know what I'm talking about, Mark, and I need some goddamn support. Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe, with news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Wiebe, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. I'm looking here on Urban Dictionary, and it says, Weeb is a non-Japanese male who watches and is a fan of cute girls doing cute things anime, has a waifu, a waifu pillow, and is obsessed with Japan. A weeb is always talking about how cute or kawaii his favorite characters are and claiming one of them to be his waifu. I mean, you know, sometimes the definition yeah, fits. Yeah, it sounds like less of, a, of an insult and more of a apt descriptor. No, it doesn't. <laughs> 
I don't even. I don't. This is not funny. This. I know this is supposed to be a funny podcast, but you no. Know, there's a time for jokes, and then there's a time for seriousness. And I don't even know what a waifu is. I think it's you know it's those pillows with an anime character right. on it, and then you sleep. With and maybe do things with I, I don't know things. that uh, anime character pillow. That description didn't make it sound as preverted as I thought it was. Maybe uh, maybe was you're, you're banging a body pillow. That's part of it. Yeah, it didn't say banging. Maybe it said just. But maybe it said just holding. <laughs> just just a, it's a comfort. <laughs> it's a it's yeah. A comfort. Maybe it's just like a comfort thing. Body pillow, right? Maybe hey, that's what Let's it is. That, that makes it sound. I will lonely. say, in talking about getting uh, ads, I have been getting a lot of pillow ads lately. So maybe this is <laughs> the square pillow. Every they're all about the square pillow. Are you supposed to use it like to lay your head yeah. on at night? I mean, what else do you use your pillow for? Except you, you tell know, me. <laughs> I know. It's, I know. I've been accused of doing other things with pillows, <laughs> and I'm here to say that that's not true, and that those are those are rumors that I don't that I don't want. And I, you know, I don't, here's the thing about cancel culture is that, um, here we go. (laughs) You know, sometimes it's, it's a rumor spread out of control. I mean, first it's Pepe Le Pew and then it's me with one of the cats from neighbor Totoro, uh, that has a ripped hole in it. (laughs) And I just, I don't, I don't understand, you know, Art is art. Like, would people be calling me <laughs> weird names if I bought a bunch of Picassos and had them on my wall? <laughs> I mean, if you had them on your wall, if and I had a, if I had a, sex with them, if, if I had a pillow <laughs> of Starry Starry <laughs> Night, what would be the big deal about that? <laughs> what do you do with that pillow? Have you cut a hole in the pillow for Starry Starry <laughs> Night? Is there... I don't have the Starry Starry <laughs> Night pillow, but maybe at some point, if you did, it might get a did. rip in it. If pillows get ripped. They're they're soft. <laughs> <laughs> right, they're soft, just soft enough, though. Right, just how, soft enough. How soft? I, you you know what pillows are. I don't need to explain to you guys what pillows are. And sometimes I, you know, if you carry them from room to room, they get hung up on stuff and they get a rip in it. Why are you carrying them from room to room? Right. Well, because sometimes some of the other pillows don't want me to sleep in certain rooms. <laughs> Sometimes I've had a fight with a pillow that's sleeping in the one room. Uh, yeah. So I have to go sleep on the couch with a different pillow. You have a rich inner life. <laughs> Relationships are complicated. Polyamorous pillow relationships. <laughs> yeah. I get it. I get it. It's rough. It is. It's it's rough. Especially in, in, in COVID, uh, in COVID times. Right. In these unprecedented times, it's really... Mm-hmm. Relationships are really right. strained together. I mean, and so I'm dealing Some with... Some of the pillows don't want to be as close to you all the time. They need their space, probably. It's probably hard. Well, I just, you know, I, it's coming at me from all angles. It's the cancel culture, the the nicknames, the relationship stuff, the fact that I am apparently banned from Target. It's just, <laughs> it's not, it's been a rough, it's been a rough year. <laughs> Oh, that might be the worst of all three. Love That's I love going to the Target Red Apple sale. That's right. Well, we've <laughs> we've established that Mike's apparently done something to display pillows at Target. So <laughs> to display it's... or to defile? Oh, defile! Come on, you know what he's doing to those pillows. Let's not <laughs> let's not beat around the bush. You got don't get on the side of a corporation. It's a bad look. It's a bad. Lo- it's a bad look to have a news service. <laughs> ally themselves with a corporation right. so i'll just say that well we just lost target as an advertiser either way good i don't we don't need we don't need people who are that stingy <laughs> right they were right on the cusp they were so close <laughs> but i think we need to open some minds with some news stories i think that's a great idea mike what do you say kevin welcome to the international news service we're your hosts my name is kevin harrison along with my name is brian camp my name is michael j weeby hmm and over there, behind a double plex bulletproof glass case with diodes, with levers, with oscilloscopes, with uh, cans on his head. Hmm? That's what we call headphones. Oh. Is producer, audio assassin, Mark Ryan. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> See? <laughs> See? <laughs> There he is. There he is. There. He's gonna hear that later Ooh. and redub it. 
No, he's not. He's going to leave that in. Done it before. Right. (laughs) (laughs) You'll have to have to make it softer in order to not scare people that are listening's waifus. (laughs) That's right. Because some people's waifus are very timid. Now, my question here, though, is when we've we've heard a few times your wife ask you to keep it down. Was that your pillow? No. It's very Norman Bates kind of. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. My wife, my wife doesn't know as much about my wife who's <laughs> the, the fortunate, oh, the fortunate thing is that my wife also is not interested in this podcast. So <laughs> I am safe. We, there's nothing that needs to be cut. That's good. I'm imagining you're opening a closet door and just seeing a stack of disheveled body pillows with random tears and <laughs> she there's a room she's not allowed in what's the don't go in that room story oh, that's uh blackbeard's wife right maybe that's the the end of the story i don't recall but maybe it was just a room full of silken pillows i it's... only read clancy's <laughs> <laughs> that's right probably not a lot of waifu in clancy though right that well there's some fanfic that ties the two together and I read all the fanfic. I read Clancy fanfic. Right. Well, you identify with those folks. You have a lot. Well, in- I mean, yeah, I think that, you know, I have solved a lot of case cases and I am a man of action. Yes. I, admittedly, I'm not like a roided out Schwarzenegger type. No, you're pretty cut, yeah. though. I mean, guilty as charged. But I'm also <laughs> I can identify with the humbleness projected by some of those characters because it's like they they know what they can do they know they know what they can do with their their hands and their ops and and how they no one can get really close to them because they've seen too much so that's there's there's a lot i identify with that's right that's why your 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 street magician cover works so well it ties into your your skill with your hands and you keep people at a distance you create that mystery oh that's what got me into the manager's office at target (laughs) was it hustling out front or did you help yourself to something in the store with your close-up magic skills i was coming up to people and saying hey let me show you something Mm -hmm. and then that in conjunction with the whole thing that happened over in the in the bedroom (laughs) at where section there was security involved and they took me in there but Mm -hmm. little did they know little did they know it was all orchestrated by me so I could get in there and get their sensitive, sensitive <laughs> data. Went, I, I went in there looking for it. What, what information was that? When the new PS5s are going to oh. be there. <laughs> Turns out they do not keep that information. That's right. <laughs> you, do, you do know who was scheduled for the last lunch on Tuesday, though. That's the... <laughs> yeah, I, did get a, I did get a peek at, at, um, at what the end caps are going to look like uh, next week. That that it it is illegal for me to know that, but sometimes you have to operate in gray areas of the law in order to keep this country safe. Right. I'm imagining a moment where those <laughs> those target security guards realize that you wanted to be caught the whole time. Uh huh. When you when you leak that planogram <laughs> info, when you I said, well, why don't you guys leave me alone in here for a little bit so I can think about what I did wrong to the pillows. <laughs> And and then they left, and I pulled out my micro camera. That's, is that what you pulled out when they when you were thinking about the pillows? Is that... I pulled out my micro camera. Yeah. I took little pictures of all the planogram yeah. stuff, <laughs> and then I sell it to the highest bidder. Let's get started here. Yeah, our first story comes to us from Vice. Mm. Is it about mustaches and uh, and lame pants in the summer? <laughs> Not this one. Okay. It's actually a follow-up to a story we did in episode two, where we discussed the Oklahoma bill directing the state's Department of Wildlife Conservation to create an annual Bigfoot hunting season. Mm, Yes. Did we solve that one, Mike? We did. I think think we did. Yeah, it was actually, if I recall correctly, it was uh, a lady out in Oklahoma who was not, in fact, Bigfoot, but (laughs) had many attributes (laughs) in common with what we believe that was the theory it wasn't solved but it was you know right well so that bill stalled in committee but justin humphrey the oklahoma state rep who introduced it has now revealed a bigfoot bounty of 2.1 million dollars thanks to the producers of an unnamed quote hollywood bigfoot movie whoa humphrey clarified that the bounty is to catch not kill bigfoot adding quote 
Our goal is not to kill Bigfoot. We want to make sure that everybody understands that we're not out trying to shoot Bigfoot. What we want to do is trap Bigfoot. I mean, I'll tell you right there, good luck, because it's going to be the other way around. I mean, what tends to happen in these cases is, uh, a lot, especially if it's a female Bigfoot, these ladies... What they like to do, it's basically a hunter becomes the hunted situation. You're out there hunting Bigfoot. You're out there trying to trap him. But the next thing you know, she's got you. She's got you all wrapped up and there's nothing you can do about it. She's got your hands. She's got your, she's got one, she's got one of those big meaty giant palms. Mm -hmm. Each finger, each finger on those hands is as big as something on you. And she is got both hands held together with one hand, and she's got her That's other hand. Really, doing God yeah. knows what else. And there's there's nothing you can do. And she'll just rip off your clothes. There's not there's nothing you can do about it. You're just stuck. And at that moment, all the all, all I know we talked about this last time, but I just want to really <laughs> remind you. That since this is a follow up thing, that's right. There will be animals out there, and the animals will just be laughing at you, <laughs> mm-hmm. laughing at your little naked body. No control. It, it really sounds like you don't right. want to do anything about this. Right. There's nothing you can do. There's not. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. There's nothing yeah, it, you can do about it. It doesn't matter. He, that's that's the thing. He 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 wants to do something about it. He just can't. No matter what, he just. Can't it sounds do like anything. you you don't want anything. You don't want to do you don't want to do anything about it. It doesn't matter what I want. <laughs> it matters what she wants. But that sounds like that's the way you want it. Do I want the sky to be a different color? Well, that's just a stupid wish. It's just <laughs> never going to happen. The sky is always going to be blue unless, you know, it's gray clouds. It's one of those two it just I'm not going to sp- I'm going to waste my time wanting a thing I can't have. <laughs> Uh, wanting anything because it's just, just it's just it's a simple mm-hmm. like what i said theory high, but it's a law things are things bigfoot women hold you down <laughs> rip off your clothes hold you up point mm-hmm. at, <laughs> point at your genitals and laugh <laughs> and i thought the and, animals laughed in animals, well, they, they the females laugh. I mean, it's a loud. It sounds. This is what it sounds like when a when the female uh, skunk ape big feet. Look at it, and and you've got all these. An- I mean, it's just you know. I, I I just think it'd be dumb to sit around and go, I wish the sky was purple, or I wish that Bigfoot women wouldn't rip off my clothes, hold me up, point at my genitals, and laugh while barnyard an- while barnyard and forest animals gather up and also point and laugh. That, that it's like might uh, be well, the, okay, well waste first it, you know uh, shit uh, in one hand and wish in the other, yeah. see which one fills up first. <laughs> that was a that was an effective Bigfoot impersonation. That was I've not heard that before and it was it was chilling. It was. It felt like it was. It felt like I was. I was there. Not that I would want to be. It must have been terrifying for you to be restrained in such a way. <laughs> that's what you do when you're out hunting for Bigfoot. That's the noise that you'll sometimes hear off in the distance, and you'll think like, "Oh, some poor, poor fella is out there getting laughed at right now." Right. And you wish that was you? I no. I, I mean, I I just think to myself, I wonder where that is, so I can get there as soon as possible. <laughs> And maybe he'll have left, but the Bigfoot will still be there, and I can catch that Bigfoot. It, it doesn't seem like you catch any of these big feet. I can't. Yeah, again, like it doesn't seem like I ever use my mind powers to turn the sky purple either, or turn it the sky like green. You get to them to catch them, and then mm-hmm. repeatedly they have caught you, like dozens of times. Yes, I've not. <laughs> I've not been. Yes, I have been very transparent about not being successful in any of my bigfoot uh attempts to catch them now i've got double the reason i've got this this bounty now i'm hearing about this bounty which is you know could really really get out of some me out of some financial debt that i'm in and some legal issues with uh the, with the target corporation that are kind of hanging over my head and so i am i'm doubling down my efforts in order to catch one of these bigfoot you know mike i think it says a lot about you that you know you've obviously met with some some real humiliation out there in the woods mm-hmm. and I have. and you keep you keep at it you know you 
you're restrained and humiliated. I can only imagine spent as it were. And yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, a husk of a human just, just used. Right. And on top of that, all the, all the clothes, all the, the clothes I've had to rebuy, I've had some very, Mm -hmm. and you know, like the, that's a money thing, but it's also like my favorite pair of easy life chinos ripped. Well, just there. I mean, they're ruined. Right. Now, when you see this female Bigfoot, is that, is that on a pillow? there's a different legend for the Bigfoot in Japan. And um, <laughs> I've heard this. I mean, this is, you know, I don't know the whole story, but this is something that it's been documented. Yeah. There's a, they have their own culture around that. And you know, the, the Sasquatch you <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I mean, let's just, let's go all out. How does a Sasquatch you, we know what an American Bigfoot sounds like. Is what does a Sasquatch you sound like? They go, tee hee 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 hee. They're they're just as big and aggressive, but they act a little bit more dainty, right? Yeah. But there's still the humiliation, right? That seems that seems like that's oh yeah, oh even more so sometimes, <laughs> right? Right. They really lay it on thick, yeah. But I don't know. But definitely, I mean, I figure I do figure like this might be my ticket out of um, this if I can capture one of them, at least <laughs> kind of square up my debt with Target. It doesn't sound like a gamble. It sounds like you've had enough experiences that you might be the most prepared, the well, most suited. For yeah. Task. I mean, worst case scenario, the same thing that's happened to me these seven or eight other times happens. And, you know, I've lived through that. I've lived I've lived through that experience <laughs> and I've come out. I would say a stronger person all 14 or 15 times that's happened, you know? It seems like it, maybe it's happened more than... <laughs> do you think maybe you've suppressed some of these memories and, and they've, they're have they just kind of coming back to you in waves? or Because, or, I mean, you went from seven to eight. No, to, I think about them all the... I mean, some of them uh, may be suppressed, but I do... I think about... There's a bunch that are definitely there that are not right. suppressed. They're, honestly, they're at the forefront of my memories and they actually kind of get in the way of me thinking about most other things <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and getting work done right. and all that and getting, you know, having relationships with other people and stuff like that. They kind of get in the way right. of that because I spend a lot of time thinking about them and journaling. I do a lot <sighs> yeah. of journaling about well, it. I mean, that's, that's good for growth. You know, <laughs> I got some, and I got some <laughs> NFTs for sale of some artwork that I did based around them. If they do sell, I'll probably be able to put some of that towards the uh, the target situation. Yeah, really, I think they owe me at this point. But yeah, how much do uh, eighty seven uh, my pillows cost? That's the guy, right? Is that the, the my pillow guy? Sure. You know, he actually, if if you actually do, I like, I'm not a fan of him or whatever, but he's had some Sasquatch experiences too. I, I don't doubt it. Get on the forums. Get on the yeah. get on the Reddit. Well, I mean, I'll I'll definitely want to want to look at that. It it kind of it <laughs> it ties into some of his decompensating. I think is I think your experience is to mm-hmm. hear you tell it. It sounds very traumatic. Experience is Ex- several right or like at well, least twenty five, twenty six, right? I think I'm, I'm putting it more in the forties, sure, forties or fifties. Right, right. I mean, that's a lot of Sasquatch encounters. And it's a lot of times to, you know, face that type of humiliation. It sounds, it sounds like it's something that's, that was traumatic for you. It sounds like something that is... It continues uh, to be traumatic, yeah. It's just stuck in that, that sensory register, right? You just can't escape it. It's always Yeah, and it's, there. Just, it's so there that, I mean, honestly, like, at some point it feels like you almost, by you, I mean me, kind uh-huh. of expect that trauma, looking right. out for it, that you're almost, you're seeking mm-hmm. it out, but I don't... I don't I know I'm not doing that because I want to get that money. So that's the only reason I'm I'm headed out to the I'm headed out to McKinney Falls tonight with my flashlight and um mm-hmm. probably some security pillows. I would yeah, think. probably just, you know, and the weather's nice so I can wear my short shorts. The ones that just go on with elastic, you know. The Sasquatch might be able to preserve your clothing. Not through any kind of intent. That's but. what I'm hoping. That is that right. is what I'm hoping. But not that yeah. I want to get caught. I want to catch them. Yeah, sure. This is really tearing me up. I mean, I, I can yeah, we talk is... about something else. I'm a little... Yeah. So, according to the Bigfoot Field Researchers Organization, there have been 106 confirmed Bigfoot encounters in Oklahoma. 
The state right. is also stop, 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 stop. I was just gonna say I can vouch for about sixty-two of those <laughs> encounters. Just in Oklahoma. Do we have any idea what it takes to confirm a Bigfoot encounter? Well, I was there on sixty-two of them. <laughs> okay, you've that's you've reported mm-hmm. a Bigfoot encounter. I don't know that that is a confirmation. I know I'm not. I'm not the, questioning your story, sir. Yeah, but if we're going to use the word confirmed, I think we need. Well, I would say the marks on my body and my tears are confirmation. <laughs> that is tragic. I'm a little worried about you. Ripped but I'm clothes. Still not gonna, as you rip clothes, count. My concern grows. I still am not going to count right, well, that. I'm, I'm going to take a step back since you're so such a skeptic. Would you swear on a stack of constitutions? I don't miss mix. Religion and politics. That's a troubling statement. <laughs> which one is the religion we... and which one is the politics here? Exactly. 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 <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Ben. I think you just figured it out, Kevin. Yep. Okay. I'll just, for, I'm sorry for the sake of this. I, I will put away my, my skepticism and we, I will go along with the notion that there have been 106 confirmed Bigfoot encounters, confirmed right. Bigfoot encounters. In Oklahoma alone. Right. Okay. The state is also home of the Mid America Bigfoot Research Center called Maverick. It is so dumb. Yeah. We'll get back to Maverick in a minute here. I mean, it just implies that there's an Eastern and a Western and maybe a North. I mean, I'm glad they specified that they're only <laughs> the Mid American right. Bigfoot Research Center. So well, they don't want to step yeah. on anybody else's toes outside of Mid America. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what the mm-hmm. female Bigfoots do. They step on your toes. <laughs> And just look right at you and giggle, right? And you just they go, is that hurt? That hurt, <laughs> little man. <laughs> is that hurt, little man? And you just have to sit there and take it. <laughs> and you're naked. And Oklahoma hosts two annual Bigfoot festivals, which just happen to be in Representative Humphrey's district. Well, he's a good he's a good rep. He's looking after his constituents. Hubert. That's right. It is. It is not Hubert. Humphrey. Yeah, it's Hubert Humphrey's kid. <laughs> However, the director of Maverick is not pleased with this bounty, stating, "Quote for those of us that are out there, now yeah. we've got to." Hey, Kevin. Yes. So, you earlier you quoted the congressman, right? And I was comfortable again with your elitist Ohio accent because mm-hmm. I assume that over time a congressman would have ensured that they sound. Is is as much like a conceited, arrogant northeasterner mm-hmm. as possible, like you, a carpet um, beggar, you might say. Carpet, uh, well, <laughs> your words. I think if we we're actually talking about, and now we're we want again the listener to to feel like or to, to understand that it's not you talking right now, and I I feel like such an ass for doing this over and over again. I don't know why I have to though, because (laughs) you're not the one in this story. Mm -hmm. It's someone else. It's someone who works for Maverick. So I don't think someone who works for Maverick, um, the director at that sounds like an Ohio elitist. So are you saying I could never be the director of a Bigfoot uh, organization? Yeah. I don't think that the director of a, and I will speak for this, as a um, as somebody who traffics in the Bigfoot community quite a bit, mm-hmm. uh, you don't need to sound like a college boy, and you sound like a college okay. boy. Oh, okay. So the director of Maverick, he's not pleased with this bounty situation, stating, mm-hmm. "Quote: For those of us that are out there, now we've got to worry about these idiots going out into the woods making <laughs> whoop loud vocalizations and setting traps." When they were talking about actually hunting it, I told them it was just stupid. It still makes for a dangerous combination when you'll have people that have no clue about what they're doing in the woods out there trying to claim $2 million. I mean, it sounds like you just have to walk through the woods and sooner or later she'll find you. I mean, right, that's Mike? what's always <laughs> happened to me. I actually agree with them quite a bit because, you know, <laughs> it's just not, that's not the way to go out there like, Hey, give me attention. Hey, where's the Bigfoot? Look at me over here. No, you need to accidentally stumble stumble into an area that you're not supposed to be. Like you're just a you're just a little little sneaky boy who just fell into a place, you know, this is a room you're not supposed to go. <laughs> and you got into that room and uh oh, uh oh, you're not supposed to be here. You get caught. 
he got caught. So naughty. And guess what? You're going to get in trouble. Mm-hmm. What's trouble? What's trouble look like? It means getting laughed at. Maybe, maybe, Just... maybe if you, if you do it. And the thing is, is a worry is like, maybe if you do it on your, on your like, 60 second time it's not just laughing they're gonna spank you on your bare bottom all the animals who knows maybe they'll yeah. maybe maybe you'll get restrained and there'll just be a single file line <laughs> <laughs> do they, do, <laughs> now do all the animals have their own paddle or do they I, share I don't one? know i'm just i this is you know <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Maybe on the, I don't know. I don't know what happens on your 68th time. I mean, maybe on the 68th time you just catch that Bigfoot. I just think that it's just really rude. It's it just, it defeats the point of hunting Bigfoot. If you're going to go out there and make a bunch of Bigfoot noise and try and trick them. Cause you don't trick a Bigfoot. Mm-mm. They trick you into humiliating right. yourself. That's what happens. Mm-hmm. It doesn't it doesn't sound like you need a lot of tricking. It doesn't matter. Honestly, none of this matters. <laughs> none of this story fucking matters. None of it. Everything you have said about what people ban this, do this, don't do that. Because what they, at the end of the day, one of these one of these Bigfoot's gonna catch you, and they're gonna they're gonna rip your clothes off, and they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna laugh, they're gonna laugh, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> There's nothing so you can do about it. <laughs> That's all I have to say about Bigfoot. So the director of Maverick explained... It's, Kevin has more, don't worry. Yeah, there's a, there's a little bit more here. The director of Maverick explained that he takes a scientific approach to Bigfoot hunting and writes regularly on the subject of Bigfoot, but... He says the threat isn't just to his valuable research, explaining, quote, One time, I messed up, come around a corner, and there's two Bigfoot Big feet. carrying Big a good-sized calf down the trail. All of a sudden, the back of my four-wheeler gets picked up by a third Bigfoot that had been standing off to the side that I didn't see. I think... All it was trying to do was keep me running into the other two Bigfoot, but it broke the bumper off my four wheeler and left its left its handprints on it. It was a pretty big encounter. That doesn't sound like any Bigfoot encounter I've ever had. Mm-mm. I call bullshit on that. Now, what does sound plausible is that those big feet. Thank you. We're going to humiliate that that calf. I think they're going to take that calf out. And hold it yeah. up to show all the other animals and go, look at look at this little thing. Look at this little cow. Little cow with this little swooshy tail. Look at it. Look at it. Look at little cow. Look at look how tiny it is. Because cow is small to a Bigfoot. And um right. that sounds plausible. Everything else is bullshit. Let me ask you something, Mike. Do you now when you go out Bigfoot hunting, yeah, do you ever dress up as a calf? No. No. I dress up I dress up like like I, I regular regular clothes, short shorts, Ooh. elastic waistband, and a mesh tank top. Mesh mesh tank top. That's a that's a good look. An- ankle socks mm-hmm. with fringe on them, sure. and, and and dress shoes with buckles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ask the Maverick dude. He knows what we dress like. Do you take your four wheeler? I don't have a four wheeler. That scares away the Bigfoot. Apparently, it didn't, according to the director of Maverick. Yeah, it pissed well, the Bigfoot. Clearly, it pissed it off. It ripped off the bumper. <laughs> Bigfoot don't like four wheelers, just like Loch Ness monsters don't like wave runners. That's kind of a axiomatic in the cryptic world. I think Bigfoot don't like four wheelers, and Nessie doesn't like wave runners. Chupacabra. Uh-huh. They hate mm-hmm. skateboards. <laughs> All right, Kevin. Uh, I think we solved this one. Good job. Yeah, I think we solved this one. This is just more propaganda. Mm-hmm. You'll be claiming that two point one million dollar reward. I mean, hopefully. I mean, I'm I'm gonna go try. I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm, Mike might be owed one hundred and fifty million dollars at this point, probably just from the 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 humiliation he's endured so many times. <laughs> right. I know. Especially, I was gonna say, especially the fact that a lot of the photos of these things got these encounters got uploaded to the internet. Who was taking those pictures? You know, one of the fucking owls. <laughs> What's the next story? Yeah. So our next story comes to us from the BBC. On May 6th, 2018, three pagans stepped over a rope barrier and walked past a sign reading no entry and entered Stonehenge to protest the management of the site and its entry fee. Did you say pagan? Pagan. Are you talking about people against goodness and normalcy? 
<laughs> yes. from uh, the the hit film Dragnet starring Tom Hanks and Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> okay, I'm familiar. I'm talking about people who practice ancient religions. Witches, you might say. People that are into polyamory and wear Ren Fair clothing. They may. I didn't see pictures. No, they do. Am I the only one hearing Pagan? Pagan. Pagan. Pagan? Yeah. Pagan. 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 Oh, man, this is this is a problem, Kevin. <laughs> You're going to have hey, to cut this part out because I don't, I don't think happening. so. <laughs> I think this is something we got to get to the bottom of. Yeah. Mike, what do you say? I, it's Pagan. Pagan. Yeah, it sounds like you're saying pagan. Pagan. As in like the sex act. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> I Again, I don't want to limit these uh, individuals in any way. They, you know, they live and practice their religion as they choose. Maybe so they just roll their pants up a certain way. Yeah, I guess I, I didn't even think I took the dirty route. But yeah, also pagan, <laughs> like the like a 50s <laughs> greaser. That's going out to a rumble. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what this is. When you're a witch, you know you're a witch. (laughs) (laughs) Go break off a branch and fly on the switch. All right. One pagan claimed... God damn it. Now everyone's going to hear it, Kevin. I'm sorry. I didn't wish you said anything, but everyone is going to hear pagan. Good. I hope they do. I hope we get letters going, <laughs> Kevin, you are right, and Brian is wrong, right. and he should be ashamed. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Keep wishing for that. That's that's like wishing that a Sasquatch is just going to let you go without taking off your clothes. One pagan <laughs> said she derived energy from the stone circle and could charge her healing crystals there. Mm-hmm. Another said she wanted to access the stone circle every full moon as part of her beliefs. And the third, known as the bard from Avebury... And the Stonehenge singer said she wanted to access the site eight times a year for druidic festivals and to remedy her back pain. Well, good for her. Dones isn't working. The first pagan said, these stones are too tall. The second pagan said, these stones are too wide. And the fourth pagan said, these stones charge up my menstrual crystals just right. (laughs) Menstrual crystals. That's... (laughs) Three fans of uh, these three Lilith Fair concert goers wandered over from the festival to Stonehenge. I don't know that Lilith Fair is specifically associated with pagans oh. or pagans. I think it's. I think Lilith Fair is typically more connected to the lesbian community. I think that's when people reference Lilith Fair, I think that's what they're trying to do. Well, I just know that there weren't a lot. When I was out there trying to tell them about Christ, I got a very poor reception. <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> anyway, let's hear about let's let's hear more pagan talk. Okay. All three were convicted of breaching protections on the historic monument and they appealed those convictions. Mm. Upon appeal, their attorneys argued that restricting access to Stonehenge infringed on pagan rights to free religion, expression, and lawful protest. However, justices reviewing the case denied the appeal, ruling I'm going to do a, a English. I see Brian pointing okay. at me, and we. I've prepared I'm, an English am, justice for this. I hear it coming. The justice ruled. Quote, what, are you, what are you in your head? What are you wearing right now? How are you getting into into character for this? Well, I've, I think. Got, I've got on some some puffy velvet red robes. I've got okay. a you know a very high powdered mm-hmm. curled wig, mm-hmm. uh, completely clean shaven, very stern look. Mm-hmm. Oh, and a, a little bow on the side. Are you drinking anything? I'm drinking tea. Okay. Okay. That's I can I can buy this. Yeah, that's okay. what that's what a British person would be drinking. Yes. The justice the justice has ruled quote <clears throat> if such access would uh, uh, inevitably have an adverse effect on Stonehenge uh, uh, to the detriment of current and uh, future generations. This is very it's like, like it's <laughs> befuddled. It's- <laughs> This is very similar to what I heard about going into Target from the Target employee <laughs> managers there. Were they wearing, mm-hmm. uh, were they also dressed as a... No, I mean, they didn't say it like that, but the same sentiment, it was it was similar. And I argued the same way that they were infringing on my religious rights. So anyway, I did some Googling and it looks like tours are available within Stonehenge's Stone Circle almost every morning and evening just not in October, November, or on Midsummer. So yeah, not All Hallows Eve. That's yeah. I think that was probably part of the yeah. reason they cut back on those dates. Yeah. Uh, and those tours cost about 148 pounds. And that's how much I can uh, curl. 
That's you're probably a very popular person at your gym, Mike. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I am. They're, they're, they've been sending me letters asking when I'm coming back. <laughs> I think gyms are, are famous. That's the place you go for all the people that want to see someone loudly work out. Right? Oh, and I think that's probably why, because I'm, I'm always the loudest person at the gym. Mm-hmm. I, I have the record for setting off the lunk alarm. <laughs> I don't know what the lunk alarm is. Oh, at Planet Fitness, there's a fucking, there's these like big, like, you know, police lights on there. And if somebody <laughs> drops something, it goes, and they set it off. It's the lunk alarm. And I'm like, Hey, look at this fucking big lunk here. Whatever. Call me whatever you want. <laughs> this honky right. lunk. So, so you think the alarm is alerting people to the great thing you just did. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're proud of me. People want to, people, people look over, they look at me. Yeah. You could tell they're like, Whoa, look at this dude. And I just, I've just learned that being the loudest person there gets me the most attention. I mean, why else do you go to the gym though? You know, uh, let me ask when you, when the alarm goes off and everybody, I'm assuming on their treadmills and their ellipticals, yeah, and, the lunk alarm, right. They, and they look at you, mm-hmm. uh, do they ever laugh at you? Is there ever, is there ever any pointing or no, I'm not like getting held up by a Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Otherwise. working out they, you, you know, there's a, the, I can tell is a look and kind of a grimace that, uh, and a head shake that says to me, mm-hmm. I wish I was him. I'm sure that's what that is. They give me what I I would describe as an envious eye roll. (laughs) Now, what kind of weight are we talking? Mm -hmm. A sick. (laughs) What's the, what's the, can you take me through the, the range, the weight ladder? Like, I mean, well, you know, it's different for whatever body part I'm working on. It's it's, it's a sick, sick amount of weight. Mm -hmm. So what is that? Like 50 pounds? I mean, if I'm, if I'm working out my wrist, (laughs) <laughs> look if you guys listen if you guys want workout tips you just have to ask you know uh, if you if you want tips on how to lean up how to bulk how to how to look into your macros i'm here i'm ready to talk about that but let's not waste podcast time with that right and if this is like been, if this whole thing in general has been a way to get me to share some of my workout tips all you have to do is ask or follow my YouTube channel, Metric Mikes, right. on YouTube.com. <laughs> Mike Metrics with an X. Mm-hmm. Uh, just mm-hmm. just hop on there and, and uh, hit that, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and and just, you know, I've got workout tips. I've got diet plans. I've got things you should wear in the summer when you're going out into the forest. I've got, uh, it's just, it's a whole YouTube channel. We can get on that. This is about the news. Let's get back to the news. All right. right, right. Well, our next story comes to us from Penn Live, the website of the Patriot News, which is the largest newspaper in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, Penn. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Penn's for Pennsylvania. Did you, yes. did you catch that, Mike? Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. At first, I thought it was Penn, like an uh, ink pen. Oh. But then I realized, like, no, it's Pennsylvania, so it's pencil. It's like kind of a reference to pencils. That's where they invented pencils, actually. That's, you know what? That's clever. That's clever that they did that. Know, Pencil, fun. pen. I bet yeah. I bet they have Luann comics in there. Oh, man. Surely. And this is at a pen factory? Pencil. No. Pencil factory. Pencil factory. Yeah. Pencil factory. Go ahead. The state of Pennsylvania. The pencil factory is called Pennsylvania. So the Pennsylvania pencil factory. Because Vania, like, sil- sil- that makes sense. So get this mic. So yeah. like... Sylvan, like you know, like elves, Sylvan's like the woods, mm-hmm. and we know pencils are made from wood, mm-hmm. so they kind of combine pencil and you know, Sylvan. So, so wood, yeah, wood pencils, right? It's probably really good wood pencils because I've not heard of that brand so. before. And then there was a there was a place called Sylvan Learning Center that they would send <laughs> uh, dumb kids to that couldn't read so good. Didn't you go there? I think that, I think that was their slogan, wasn't yeah. it? Hey, is your kid kind of dumber than the rest of the kids? So the mm-hmm. learning center. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's there's a greater than 0% chance that at least 10% of the people who listen to this podcast were just insulted. Well, they, they should have been smarter when they were younger. Well, they were just, they weren't interested in school. They were doing other things. I, I am... We're here to educate them. We're here to train mm-hmm. their minds. Mm-hmm. That's that Ohio elitist yeah. coming through. That's what that is. I don't want, I don't want, you know what? 
if they choose to learn, I hope they learn something. I think they're fine just the way they are. And that's what their parents should have told them. Yeah, I agree. I'm okay. You're okay. See at the top. I love you no matter what. That's what your folks should have said. I'm sorry that you had to go to that place at the strip center after school two days a week. <laughs> yeah. I I feel sorry for those kids too. They didn't deserve that. Right. And maybe your dad just didn't want to pick you up on his visitation days. Wow, that's uh, that sucks. Ouch. He he did. I feel well, like you're there's no maybe fine. about that. He mentioned that a number of times. Yeah. I feel like you're describing somebody specifically. No, I'm just I'm merely lamenting a a common sad reality of this American way of life, which is my late night NPR related show. <laughs> hey. Yeah, well, every show on NPR is pretty right. sad. So, well, I, that there's a lot of whimsy. Yeah, but it's sad whimsy. Mm-hmm. There is kind of a, a fatalism to everything they talk about. Yeah, there's a, an expiration to it all. We all know we're getting a day older, a day closer to the grave. Your old man's only going to pick you up so many times from that strip center. You better be ready to go. And yeah. you keep remembering that one time that there was a that he had a frosty for you and you keep thinking maybe I'll get a frosty today, but it, it never happens again. Yeah, never happens again. You don't want to say anything about it. You know, one time, one time they were playing a, they were playing a song he liked and mm-hmm. he sang along to it. And you'd never seen him have any emotion or express anything outside of right. just a furrowed brow and a tense jaw. And he let loose for a second. You were almost like, is that, is there a human? Like, I think there's a real yeah. person in there. And then you never, you never saw that person again. Nope. And you've always been thinking like, where, where was that guy? That guy that existed from the beginning of brown sugar to the end of brown sugar by the Rolling Stones. Mm-hmm. You saw, you saw the person he was, but the person he'll never be again. Yeah. Like and he, then, for one second, he was a teenager who thought he could do something and his life wasn't ruined by the burden of raising a child who could not figure out algebra at all. That's right. <laughs> had, a, had a real hard time with numbers chapter books general. and numbers. And this is a theoretical person. This isn't somebody you know specifically. It's Because that's a lot of detail. No, we're just, this is lamenting. Yeah. Well, it's it happens a this lot. This is many Americans. Yeah. Many, yep. many Americans, many sad kids yep. who just wanted to go home and watch Manimal. Yep. <laughs> and someday those those same kids are going to wake up in the morning, rub their bleary eyes, walk to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. They're going to look in a the mirror. They're going to see that same old man. Same old man. <laughs> They're going to walk over to that toilet, take a just bright yellow piss full of dehydrated, yep. non, uh, just, just a bladder full of carbs yep. from yep. Miller Lite That's, with no water value in it. Yep. That stench of, of stench pre stale urine. Smells it, like smells like soup coming out. Yeah. Thick. And then just look yep. into the mirror while while that bladder's being relieved and just go, mm-hmm. there he is, yep. the old man. <laughs> I get it. And then and then and then at that moment, that kid that used to be a kid knows why his father felt that way. Yep. And he can actually go, I wish I could be there with him now to sing the last verse that you don't quite get right, but then the chorus that you get right of Brown Sugar by the Rolling Stones. <laughs> that is a tale as old as time, Mike. On that note, mm-hmm. I will start the story. Yeah, the pencil factory. All right, so police in Pennsylvania recently arrested a 50-year-old woman for sending out fake photos and videos of her teen daughter's cheerleading rivals that depicted them naked drinking or smoking to try to get the other girls kicked off the squad. According to the affidavit, the woman created the doctored images and videos of at least three cheerleaders and then sent them in anonymous messages to the girls and their coaches and urged the girls to kill themselves. The girls went to the police and detectives were able to determine the videos were deep fakes, digitally altered, but realistic looking images and videos created using the girls social media photos. Officers then executed search warrants that allowed them to trace the text messages back to the woman's cell phone. The woman was charged with two misdemeanors and is facing three counts of cyber harassment of a child and three more counts of harassment. There are no indications, however, that her daughter knew what her mother was doing. Well, first of all, I mean, honestly, this sounds like a parent that's not going to forget to, I don't know, pick a child up from a Thursday (laughs) night at Sylvan Learning Center, Mm -hmm. even though he's been 
picking up that child every, you know, for the last two months and complaining about it and say every Thursday, every Thursday night is ruined because you're dumb brain. It's Thursday night football again. Guess what? I'm not watching you, son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> yeah. that's that seems like a parent that actually cares about her kid who wants her kid to succeed in some way. Yep. You know, I don't want to cast too many dispersions on types of people, but I don't mm-hmm. connect someone with the technological savvy and know-how to make a deep fake with someone who cares about cheerleading because cheerleading is stupid as fuck to care about. I, I mean, I really, I think if you care about cheerleading, if that's something that makes you, you know, w- whether it's for your kids or, or anything involved in the act of cheerleading, if you have even the slightest ball in that game, if you have the slightest bit of interest, then it means you are, you're probably too stupid to unlock your own car. <laughs> I think there's I think there's a theme here in the podcast. <laughs> I'm gonna hazard to say that it might be true of all of us that um pretty much any any youth event that parental involvement would help someone excel at, we kind of think is stupid, right? Yep. <laughs> okay. I think we're right. I just, just want to make sure that that's the hill we're on. Yeah. Cause I, I, I am also not a fan of of cheerleading. I guess I, I would sign a permission slip as a parent. Now I'm and I might ask that a child kill themselves, but not related to cheerleading. Well, I mean, I, but let's be honest. I ask a lot of people to kill themselves. That's right. But I'm, I, but I'm also not a, like a dick about it. You know, it's like, hey, would you do me a favor? Would you, would you mm-hmm. die by your own hand? I say it like that. Right. Well, because you don't right. want to do it yourself. That would get you in trouble. Right. No, and it's also just a bunch of work. Yeah, it is a lot of work. Why is the ch- specifically the cheerleader mom the source for so much crime? Like there, I think there's a whole, there's a whole block of of lifetime programming every every week that's that's focused on the evil cheerleader mom. That's a true story. Right. Right. And I don't, and you don't, you know, there's way more, I don't know, there's got to be more kids playing softball. You know, re, you re, I don't, I don't know the, the subgenre of murderous softball moms. I don't know that there is any event, Mike, that, that there is more unhealthy, vicarious living going on. I, yeah. Country. I mean, it has to I be. I feel like right. beauty That's, pageants in general, yeah. probably. Well, I don't think that cheerleading is, I don't, I wouldn't reduce it to a beauty no, pageant. But I'm, no, I wouldn't say it was a beauty, but I'm just saying in terms of just all of, all of that, just venom and vile and competitiveness, probably right. beauty pageants generally. I competed and I didn't have. And you're a cheerleader? No, beauty pageants. I didn't have. I mean, I, <laughs> I got along with. You were their, always last place. You know what? That's not very nice. Sometimes Kevin. they refunded your that entry was, fee. I'm just saying. I'm was, giving facts here. They was, don't have last place. They have they have first place, second place, and then everyone else just didn't win. But I right. would like to hear more about your time in the Little Misters. <laughs> <laughs> the Little Misters. I was a tap dancer. I wore a a blue blazer and a and a bow tie. Um, that tap dance was your talent. Yeah, tap, and I used a cane. Um, and help oh, well, with, I, I used a cane. I, I, I had, got to, and I had a boater, and I did. You know, what's a boater? It's a little straw hat. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. yeah. Like a delegate hat, like the boater. Yeah. yeah, that's what you wear when you when you're doing the style of tap. I was doing. You wear a boater. You know, I had had my my good my good days, and my bad ones. You know, sometimes it's a tough business. Uh, yeah. It is a tough. Yeah. I know. I know. I've heard. And I remember I tried to get into the little Mr. Circuit, mm-hmm. but I just didn't have any talents, which my dad reminded me of many a time. Right. He was like, well, what, what do you what what do you think you're even going to do up there? What, do you, what are you going to do for your talent? And I go, I go math. And then he just slapped me on the back of the head and said, <laughs> come on, I got to take you to Sylvan. Yeah. Could, could you actually do math? I can now. <laughs> yeah. Now that now that somebody finally believed in him. Uh, ask me any number. <laughs> what's what's after nine? Ten. There you go. Wow. Ask me any number and I'll tell you if it's a real one. Five. That's a real number. Gorbon. That's not. That's made up. <laughs> that's made up. Are you sure? Uh-huh. All right. You said you said four Vaughn. I said Gorbon. Oh, Gorbon. That's uh, definitely uh that is definitely not a real number. There are no numbers that start with G. <laughs> you 
you're very good. I'm, I'm glad you, you, you learned math in such a such a literate way. That's yep. great. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, you got, you got, I got. You know, honestly, it was a painful time, but I got to give yeah. some credit to Sylvan Learning Center. <laughs> they actually did their job. You're a Sylvan success story. I am a Sylvan success story. A Sylvan succeeder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your dad gave you a lot of grief because you couldn't make the little Mr. Circuit. I got a lot of grief because I was on the little Mr. Circuit. Mm. Uh, that was, there, that was where most of the disappointment from my father came from that I participated in little <laughs> misters. Oh, he was mad at you for that. He just, he, he just didn't respect tap. I think if I'd had <laughs> um, a different talent, is he like a soft shoe guy or more he, like he, a baton? He baton. did a lot oh. of baton work and he thought that, <laughs> yeah. you know, that was our heritage and I had stepped away from it. And I remember the first time he saw me with a cane, there was like this moment of excitement and then he saw the crook at the end and you know i don't know that we had more than a four sentence conversation after that <sighs> that's that's hard and mm-hmm. I, you know but you got to really look at the time it's i know it's hard to do but you got to take it in the context of the time and his generation who you know they they you know tap tap was the most masculine thing you could do to be a a tap dancer they like the, you know like who who was the most popular entertainer at that time gregory hines of course yes uh he was the a star of kid. action movies uh like yeah uh like like running scared he was in running scared with billy crystal Great. and it's like who you know at that time you look at that those were the alpha males those were the those were the arnold schwarzeneggers of that time period and that's where your dad's head was and it was always going to be there so then when you pull out you know baton it seems like oh this is you know you know i i get it i do i do get it but you know at least it, right. i will say it's not a contest but at least you got into the ballpark and i was not even allowed you know i was right. out there right. in the parking lot trying to scout well yeah incorrectly oh, solving math problems isn't much of a talent i think i i wasn't trying to solve math problems <laughs> i was going to get on stage and identify numbers <laughs> That's right. i was going to correctly <laughs> identify numbers how about this one uh forbo <laughs> no it's not a number it's not a number it sounds like is it, one is it close <laughs> huh? okay it sounds like one but it's not ints no okay ints is not a number Okay. Last name of the vice former vice president. <laughs> Ince. Yeah. Wait, how about I got one. How about 11 teen? I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> See, I I feel like that was a trick question. I, I, that was I, a setup. I listen, I'm not I don't, I'm not in the I'm not in that competitive circuit anymore <laughs> right now, you know? Like I don't right. I didn't know this was going to come up or else I would have, you know, done my exercises. You're at your ex, what? Your exercises? <laughs> yeah, my number exercises. What, is, what is, is there, is there ever a luck alarm when you're doing your number exercises? If it was, it'd go off all the time because I'm pretty fucking good at it. Do you get just as excited when you successfully finish a, a set of number exercises? Yeah, I do like Ric Flair, like, woo! That's a Bigfoot call. Uh, we we covered that one, earlier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! <laughs> it goes on. It goes on like that for a while. What's what's the highest you've gotten? I passed out. <laughs> you just wouldn't stop. I just went until I passed out. <laughs> it is. That's how you get better. You just got to keep working at it. You just keep, yeah. Um, keep. <laughs> you just do that for me one more time. Just show, Ooh. show me. I, I missed one, two, three, four, five, six. What? I lost track of where I was. <laughs> oh, shit. Again, get... I'm out of practice. Don't like give if you, up. Don't give up. If we, well, I'm just saying, if you want me to to give me a couple weeks of getting back into shape, and I'll. I mean, we yeah. could just do the whole whole podcast. We could just me me going. Do you think you could get to fifty? That's a real number, and <laughs> yes, 
probably. All right. Maybe it's a special treat one week. We can have you go all the way to 50. That's Patreon bonus content. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I mean, only if he can get there. We don't want to. We don't want to promise something we can't deliver. You no, know, I don't think that's fair, Kevin. I think that I think people are are pretty supportive and they want to. I'll work my way up to it. I'm not saying I'm going to do it on the first try. <laughs> that's hard. Yeah. But <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> that's how. That's how it. I've always. That's how I've always done everything in life. Right. I've muscled through until the mm-hmm. end. One step at a time, right? Yeah. I'm not going to say I'm making it without mistakes on the first try, but I'll get it. Yeah. 12 to 13, that's a hard transition. There's a bunch of tough ones in there. There's a bunch that are way harder than you would think. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear you give it a try. I mean, I'm up for the challenge, you know? I've been sober for like a week now. (laughs) Yeah. And I think that's probably going to help. Right. I think what would make it even more special to you is that a lot of your drinking came from your hardship with math that that's what well there's a song that i actually use <laughs> that kind of combines the two uh-huh. about beer bottles that are placed on the side of a god that's got to be so frustrating for you i gotta remember i gotta remember the lyrics though yeah. anyway like again i wasn't planning to get in on all this but <laughs> you guys challenged me i'm down i'm down to do but it we're, we are impressed. I, mean, I wouldn't call it a challenge it yeah. is a challenge like i'm i'm on french canadian what no that's what challenge? No, that was that. I'm referencing the Cosby Show, oh. which I probably shouldn't do. Yeah, but it was a tap dance. It specifically, it was a tap dance guy. It's fucking full circle. <laughs> it was a tap dance guy who probably met That's, a sasquatch hey, can, in the can woods. Can we add it? Listen, I know we have callbacks that I get real excited <laughs> about, oh, yeah. but um, I think we need a shout out for. It's, it's going to be called Full Circle when things come full circle, Ooh. and we'll go. Hmm. I don't, I, we need to figure out what it's going to be for Mark to immediately end the podcast. Is, is that is that like Yahtzee? Is it a- <laughs> yeah, it's got a, it's it's like rolling a natural twenty when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. It's Holy it's a rare shit. event. Yeah, but full circle. Maybe that. Maybe that's a soundbite. Anytime something comes up like that. So full circle. Full circle. Yeah, that's that feels good. Oh. Feels good. Yeah, there was a there's a there was a tap dance guy that came on the Cosby show and it just it weirdly devolved into Bill Cosby and the I guess it was some real tap dance guy and it was just they were tap they were having a tap off and the tap off <laughs> guy just kept saying challenge. Mm-hmm. Y'all remember that? No. no, I remember that. Yeah. I just I was thinking of my time in the little misters and that's a tap dance challenge is what got me out of it. Oh I mean, that's yeah, yeah, what, yeah, that yeah, yeah. yeah. My knee hasn't been right since, but it's tough because they you got forced to doing tap, and you're just wanting to do baton. My dad wanted me to do baton, but <laughs> full circle, full circle, full circle. <laughs> full circle. <laughs> full circle. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.